round of applause. Nick Smoot and Kelly Hoy. Thank you. All right, this is going to be fun. It, this, this will be fun. Okay, so I've got a really, the big burning question I have. Okay. Please explain how a city of 50,000 has ended up with 57 million in venture capital investment in robotics and AI. Yes, yeah, I can do that. Um, so to frame that, uh, how, how big is Aruba, roughly, like population size? 110. 110,000 here? Okay. So, I don't know, if you caught what you said, a city of 50,000 people, roughly 57 million in venture capital, in about two and a half years, just in robotics and artificial intelligence. That's a little bit peculiar. Uh, it has to do with this crazy idea that I've been working on for about eight years called Innovation Collective, um, which I found funny earlier. There's like the other guy who started Innovation Collective, but ours is trademark, so that's a whole other conversation. Um, but <laughs> but, um, but we, ha we took this approach that you can take small markets and what you do is you turn the whole city into an incubator. I I'm, I'm a firm believer uh, that smaller, smaller markets that try and do inc or, uh, incubators or accelerators, it's tough because you get a very select small community. But if you can get obsessive culture in a whole town, that changes everything. And our, our model is actually around 36 minimum events per year in a town. That's incredibly inclusive. So we go after little kids, uh, K through 12. We get the science fairs involved. Uh, we get the citizens to start believing that they have hope in themselves first. I think in a lot of markets that are uh, detached from large economies, you need to believe that you have magic in you. Uh, the people in this room, you're here because you're selected to come. You came here. I said, I want to be here, right? But there's still 149,000 other people in Aruba who didn't show up. Uh, many of those people believe that they don't have anything to contribute. So uh, we're a little bit Tony Robbins-ish, someone said at one point, and uh, I'm like Tony Robbins meets venture capital. Not a big fan of that uh, statement, but it works. Uh, because in the city of 50,000 people, we now have about eight, 9,000 people per year we see in the city. And we've got the K through 12 schools doing science fairs around robotics. And we have the colleges starting new programs. In a city of, of roughly 50,000, you can get a PhD in robotics now. Uh, and we have a summits where people from uh, Boeing and Tesla and Autodesk all fly in and do think tanks in this little city. And we have a you have a 34,000 square foot yeah. Yeah, space we, yeah, but that, in a town of, like, that's the kind of thing New York would be beating its chest on. We got 57 million in investment and we got a 34,000 square foot space. Yeah. You're, in a t like, you're in like a building that was like, the town you're in, in my, my equivalent, is like smaller than one of the office towers in New York City. Basically. It's, it's like terms itty, of it's itty bitty. But really, like how we pulled it off, the building, it's funny because people see the building now and they're like, oh, um, you know, the building, that's how you pulled it off. It's like, screw that. Like, I, I tell people all the time, like, Gandhi didn't have a building, Jesus didn't have a building, like, we don't need frickin' buildings. <laughs> like, when people want to build innovation economies, they're like, we need, we need a center. It's like, screw that noise. Like, it's ridiculous. What you need to do is actually engage little kids and the people who think they're the most destitute and they have nothing to give in a town. And you need to introduce them to stories and narratives that help them have hope in their heart first. And then as they do that, then you look at the region, and this is actually a very key thing I wanna share with Aruba and all of you. Um, when you want to be an innovation economy, do not be diverse. Don't be diverse, that's freaking stupid. Like if you think that you can support all the different industries, you can't. There's not enough capital that's gonna be intelligent to focus on all the different industries. There's not enough talent to go into all the different industries. But if you can focus on a very specific area of research and development, of exponential technology as a whole island, and get all the colleges, all the government, all the people obsessively focused on it, now all of a sudden, it's like, uh, have you ever read the book, um, Horton Hears a Who? That is one of the that's greatest serious, economic books of all time. <laughs> the great economic book, Horton Hears a Who. It is. It's, you know, the voice of, we're here, we're here, we're here. And all of a sudden, the capitalistic gods of the world start to listen. And that's what we were able to pull off in this little town where we got, at first, everyone laughed, and we said, well, no, we'll be the center of robotics and AI. 
We'll be a space that leads with innovation from here. And now I'm proud to say it's consistent Apple, Samsung, Boeing, Foxconn, Autodesk. All these people are flying in and out of this little town doing joint ventures, um, mentoring, teaching at the schools, uh, doing summits. Apple came up to do a summit for all the teachers for free. And they, had, uh, they said it was the highest attended group of teachers they had at any of their summits in the summer in, in a little town like that. And do you want to know why? Because it's a community, it's a family. So um, I've got a lot of deep beliefs about being inclusive. Uh, a lot of times tech communities become exclusive. And th that's bullshit. Uh, so you should be thinking about how do we become inclusive of everyone and bring them into this, this narrative and story. But here's where I want to go on this is, is and, I, and I absolutely agree with you in terms of inclusive. Now you said you can't be diverse in terms of the diversity of the ideas you're going to Diversity fight. of the ideas, yeah. yeah. Diversity of ideas. Uh, uh, women, you know, men, race, yeah, yeah, gender, yeah, yeah. bring it, um, everybody. But, but also too, like what you've done is you've looked ahead and say this is what we're focusing on right now. Because I want to say to you, like, your disruption of the capitalist system mm -hmm. is really a disruption with respect to how opportunity is created. Yeah. But you're also disrupting how and where we learn. Mm -hmm. Because my guess is, you know, the way your community is working together as community and the way you're learning, if you see another opportunity and you see that AI and robotics isn't it, you've got a town now that can turn on a dime to come and sure. learn something else. Talk about that. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, that it's more about the community. You're absolutely right. Um, because. In our model, we start with build community in that pride and people first, right? As a whole town, we buy books for the citizens. We have um, nights where we address like how they manage their money and how they uh, manage their personal relationships and goal setting and self-talk. And as we do that with these citizens from people who live in like just trailers that are leaking all the way up to the founders of C-SPAN, um, we start to find this tribe that we can pivot rapidly. And so once we pick the vertical for the, the region or the town, my team does that. We're in, uh, we're in now soon to be seven cities. We're in five actively now. My goal is 200 over the next nine years to have the nonprofit running in. And then the venture capital fund we have is, uh, it's called Mountain Man Ventures. And then we have a real estate group that does buildings in the, the cities. And so each city, when we go through this process, I care more about rebuilding community first. Because community is, like the, the, the lack of community in our globe is destroying our GDP. Because we're not connected to each other. We're not dealing with our real issues. So once we build the community, then we go through the exercise of looking at what historically has the, the city or the region or the town done. Then what is going on in the schools? What's happening in, in the area? We work closely with Singularity University and the Milken Institute to access a lot of regional data as well. And then once we pick a, a market that's futuristic, and we say, look, this little region, you're going to be the future of energy. But you're not going to create these large-scaled companies. You're going to focus on the R&D, and we're going to get you guys obsessively thinking about it. Because R&D seems like it takes a ton of money, but it actually doesn't. That's the space where you can hack shit together in a garage and like, do it on the cheap with five people. And all of a sudden, you have something that's like, oh my gosh, what, would, what did we just build? Uh, when you want to scale a company and go compete and be 1,000 employees or 10,000 employees and build a unicorn, like, that's hard to do. So we get them focused on building, we call them wolves, not unicorns. Um, I want a city of wolves, a pack that's running together, kind of lean. And, uh, and whenever someone wants to turn our wolf into a unicorn, then exit that thing. Give it, then they can put a horn on our wolf and make it look pretty and groom it. But um, I, I think that's important, too, to right-size the idea of what does success look like in these other cities. Because when we're reimagining capitalism, this idea that how do we compete with San Francisco, you won't. How do we compete with New York? You won't. You're you. And so then you figure out like how do we create a, a very authentic piece of who we are and your voice. And then as the Horton Here's a Who thing, you get that um, we're here, we're here voice. You said, you know, do you pivot over time? I don't know. Like we're into this like uh, going on five years actively in the different cities, um, and we just finally are really understanding our model. So we haven't had to pivot a city yet. Um, but if the community needs to be pivoted, then we're prepared to do so rapidly, where we have the mayors, the governors, but all community, teachers, little kids, senior citizens. Uh, my favorite thing, one of my favorite stories about how you build a real community, uh, I was in a meeting with someone from a large Silicon Valley company, and we're sitting there and, uh, at this pub, and this was in our robotics and AI city. 
And behind me were these little old ladies who were probably in their late 80s, maybe early 90s, with all these newspaper clippings about robotics articles. And like we, the cities pass laws, each one does, to try and accommodate R&D. And so this city passed a law that gave robots the same rights as humans on public property. And so they're like, what do you think about all these robot things? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sitting there with this guy, um, and they're like, how is this even happening? Like, I'm, I'm in the articles and all this stuff, and then there's these sweet little ladies. And I was like, well, what do you guys think about it? I walked over, and they're like, oh, if it's good for our grandkids, and who knows what we can even think up. I was just like, shit, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> like, these little old ladies are innovating, like, at the table at a pub. But let's, that is like... First of all, I want to be that little old lady in right? my 90s, like innovating in a pub. Like, please, yes. sign me up for that one. You're on your right path. Like, you will end up there. That's what's going to happen. But um, I think that's a really important point that you like just touched on. That this is, in terms of community, the community and the ideas and what the laws and regulations allow. Yeah. And, that, and, and you can have an enthusiastic community and then you can hit a brick wall because, oh, no, no, this is it. So yeah. talk about that as well. Because I think, so when he said like the, the robots have the same rights as citizens, it's like yeah. you can't assault a robot. Right, right. Which yeah. is, it, you know, if you're going to actually really innovate this stuff, you got to go all in. Yeah, you got to look at everything. And, and you're right. A lot of times communities will get really excited up front. And then they hit a wall, and it's like it, it drags a little bit. Um, for us, the cool part is there's no permission, right? Like, that's the best part about being an entrepreneur is just start something. And so a lot of people don't know where to start in doing consistent events. Uh, one of our cities is doing over, literally over 70 events per year. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> but, but you know what? We don't ask permission. We just host and do and go. We host them in restaurants and bars, and there's the meetups. And so when you do bump into a political thing, um, it's, it's a bit easier, maybe, um, to, to just say, uh, you know, incorporate the politicians into the conversation with a tribe of, you know, eight, 9,000 people. Um, and quickly you start noticing all the politicians showing up at your events because you have so many people coming through in a small market and it becomes the strong voice. Uh, we have everyone running for governor in um, our most mature city in the state who's asking to host events with us. And our joke is we let them for free because I want politicians in front of our people so they can harass them. Uh, and then the joke becomes also, we want to give you a rope uh, as a politician, and you can choose to lead our people, or you can hang yourself in front of us, so have fun. Uh, and it's truly a great way to find this beautiful relationship where we make the waves. Truly, a good politician's job is to support the movement, the momentum, and to figure out how to keep it ethical and, and positive for the people. Like, that's a good role for them. And to keep all, we just run fast is the best, the best relationship, I guess. Some, something I want to touch on, on capitalism, yeah. by the way, or opportunity. Um, we've actually even started to push it away from saying capitalism only because we're working with other countries and starting to build relationships outside of the United States. Uh, when we look at the opportunity chain, things have changed in the world. Geography was a competitive advantage at one point. It's not anymore. The internet destroyed a lot of that. And shipping, the rapid shipping destroyed a lot of that. And so for us to think that, especially in the States, that you're going to start a company and go compete head-on with Facebook or Amazon out of Butte, Montana, like you're kidding yourself. But you need to figure out the space where you can create something that they desperately need. Uh, and, and you look at, a, then it becomes this relationship to a small market, hopefully, where there's consensus and collective voice and focus that you know, a place like Amazon becomes obsessed with this town. Now, all the citizens create wolf companies, like they're a talent, an IP engine, they're an innovation engine, an R&D lab, an accelerator as a whole region. And if I'm Amazon, right, they're spending 16.1 fricking billion dollars last year on research and development. That's a lot. And so if, let's pretend if they're intelligent and they listen to me, um, that they take one billion of that and chop it up into 10 chunks. And then they go to cities that are innovating and creating around an area that they think interesting and say, we'll give you $100 million a year. And we're going to give $15 million to the K-12 program for grants and 25 to the higher ed and you know, 10 to this and 5 to an art program. But we want your town to focus on the pains and, and the experiences and the delight of rapid delivery of product. <laughs> 
and innovate around rapid delivery. Don't you think Amazon would find interest in that region? with a whole city thinking about rapid delivery, and now all of a sudden the K through 12 schools have an abundance of money. It's, it's flipping the model a bit on its head of how R&D happens, so it, it's um, incredibly important. You want to say Amazon, what's their R&D in the last year? They, Part, oh. they, bought, they bought Whole Foods, like, right. seriously. Like, like where's the R&D? Right, <laughs> right. I mean, maybe they did more than that. But. Um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. maybe. No, but the whole, talk about how you're bringing in the other side of the equation, because I think this is really important. We hear a lot in terms of uh, what are we doing to get um, kids coding, what are we yeah. doing in terms of that, but how are we doing retraining and, and how, are you, how are you bringing in that other part of the population that has had, yeah, their livelihood Lost, gone, Lost, crushed. Gone. Right? Those coal jobs. Right. Like we're, <laughs> we're literally going into, like, people talk about, like, tier two, tier three cities. Like, we're going to, like, tier, like, 14, 15 cities. Uh, one city we're working with has 10,000 miles of toxic water underneath the city. It's a mess. Like, hundreds of thousands of people have left. At one point, BP suggested walling up the city. It's incredible. It would be better and, than that other wall that they're talking about. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, but what we do in this model, and how do we engage everyone and retrain them, you know, there's two things. One is we do a, lo a lot of these events, fireside chats, where before we open them up, we talk and tell everyone in the crowd, we put a cold beer in your hand, it's free for everyone, inclusive. Um, and we tell them, look, tonight you're going to hear a story from someone that's struggled, and they've succeeded and they've failed. And when you hear that story, you just understand you are somewhere on this path with them. And you're on your journey. It's not over yet. You're still alive, right? You have magic in you. And just those words right there before you tell someone else's story of success changes everything for how they perceive it, right? Now they're part of the journey. So we do that and then we start to inspire people. And then we launch uh, Coffee and Concepts, which is uh, a twice a month event where people sit down and talk about tech news. And we make them all introduce themselves too in the room. And even if there's like 50, 60, 70 people, and say why they're there at like 7 a.m. Uh, because it, it seems like AA, it's really funny uh, with everyone in the room talking. But then they, uh, they eventually start to talk about their ideas and share ideas amongst each other and help each other. And very un, uh, it's very informal in how it happens, but all of a sudden someone who's lost their job says, I have this idea. I'm trying to work on this. And then someone across the room who's an expert or a PhD at a college or a founder of a company or a senior citizen who's retired, who has plenty of time on their hands says, well, I would love to help you. Can I help you? And, and so it's not so much of let's go to a class together. It's come to my home and come to my garage, come to my shop and let's work on this together. And it becomes this family, a tribe. Um, the grade eight curriculum we've written is then focused on the whole piece of now let's get into the areas of life you just suck at like money management and relationships and all these other things, because we're all awful at those somewhere, like oh, on, a, on a scale. Yeah, there's one of them I need some help on. Right, we all do, take right. Class, yeah. So uh, as we then work with the institutions like colleges and K through 12, we have someone on our, our staff that's the Director of Education Reformation. And this person works with um, colleges to basically be like, it's okay, like let's try some new things, and it's someone who's worked in a college for a long time. So we allow the institutions that are structured to continue to be the structured institutions. We just try and reimagine how they do it and what they deliver. But you're also doing degrees. Yeah, we are. We're starting to do uh, nano degrees. Um, there's some exciting stuff we're working with. I can't announce it fully publicly yet. Um, but we're working with some Silicon Valley-based corporations to offer all the citizens of a state as a platform. And we've been meeting with them for uh, every two weeks now. When we announce it, we'll pump it through ATEC because it's kind of cool. But it's going to be a partnership between a household name tech company and a state. It's not just a college, it's a state. And so we need to be thinking this way, right? Like less about, uh, and it's not just an exclusive relationship, the whole state's a platform. So we're basically telling them, the pockets of the state want to be about this, how can we have you teach our people what we need to know to be contributors, not consumers? Because that's, that's a very clear shift that has to continue to happen. Many of these small cities uh, are stuck and they're fearful. 47% of jobs are going away in the next 20 years, right? That's what Oxford says, anywhere between 40 and like 55. Just today, the first AI lawyer was hired. I saw that in the news. There's fear in that for people. And so how do we get these large tech companies to look at places like Aruba and say that's where the future of our R&D will come from for this sector, whole industries, and then force them to pay attention and to deliver the 
education, the tools, the skills, the things that you need, because they just can't ignore you. Because it's, we're here, we're here, we're here. But you need the collective voice like Horton hears a who. Amazing. I could like sit here and talk all day on this. It would, it would be fun. Yeah. But uh, there's, and it's also, a whole, there's also beach and beer, so we can I continue know. the conversation. True, they're kicking us off. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank for, you. you know, uh, maybe it was a really hard call. So we met originally at a conference in Nashville. And when I heard Nick on stage and he said, blah, 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 Lethbridge, Alberta. And I'm like, only a Canadian knows that shithole. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, anyone from Alberta, Lethbridge is a shithole. Um, so, I, so I knew where this like armpit of a town was. I'm like, all right, we need to talk. And it's going to be the future of innovation and venture capital. Uh, no, in it, it is, it is, it is. But yeah. we saw that. And so, and then, you know, I reached out to Nick and I said, I am now going to be your best friend. Let me introduce you to a conference in Aruba. So, right. how's your first visit? Amazing. I, I love this place and the people. You guys are all awesome, by the way. So. It's been fun. All right, give them a big hand.